From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out the differences between KFC in Australia and in the US. This is Food Wars. Let's start with the original recipe chicken. In Australia, our chicken comes in three sizes, one piece on its own, a three piece box meal, or a six piece box meal. In the US, our KFC chicken comes in seven sizes. Starting with these four, you can get a single piece, obviously a la carte. Then we have three combos, a two piece, which comes with a side and a biscuit, a three piece that also comes with a side and a biscuit, and a four piece combo. Guys, you're not gonna believe this. Also comes with a side and this thing right here, which we're calling a biscuit. With all these combos, you can get yourself a medium drink. Onto the buckets, baby. I'm holding the eight piece buckets, but you can also get a 12 piece and a 16 piece. Now who wants to see what's inside these buckets? Jeez Louise. It's Grease. <laughs> We have a 10 piece, which is part of the family feast. So you can pick four sides of your choice. And that also includes a 1.25 liter drink. And then wait for it. We have a 21 piece. Yeah, this is the biggest bucket. It's bigger than the US. I can't believe this. We're finally winning something. The difference between the largest US bucket and the largest Australian bucket is 31% more chicken. Oh, look at all that chicken. Are you jealous? I... I'm surprised we cap at 16, right? We would have coasted to 40 easily, but apparently 16 is our ceiling. So 21, I am impressed, Australia. Brittany, I am impressed. On to nuggets, which come in two sizes. You can get a six piece or a 10 piece of nuggets. They gave us a box combined with both. So we're gonna count it out and make sure that they didn't rip us off. Two, four, six, two, four, six, eight, and ten. We have nuggets in four sizes, starting down here a five piece. They move up to an eight piece and a 12 piece. Both can be combos. Graphics can go ahead and get a side and a drink on the screen, please. Thank you. And then our biggest size is the 36 piece nugget. Plate, please. I don't know why we have the nuggets and not the popcorn chicken. What happened? But no. I tell you with the popcorn chicken later, so. But anyway, uh, so yeah, that's 35 piece. Oh, it's just so good. The nuggets are so good. Okay, we gotta move on. I'm gonna eat that whole plate. So Australia might have the bigger chicken bucket, but we have the biggest nugget bucket. 260% bigger to be exact. Our fries, or chips, as we like to call them in Australia, come in two sizes, a regular and large. For a regular box of fries, it is 95 grams. According to the website, it was supposed to be 120 grams for a regular fries. Why do they keep on ripping us off with fries in Australia? Now to weigh the large fries. So they are weighing in at 206 grams. They should be 240. America, I hope your KFC is a bit more honest. In the US, our KFC fries come in two sizes, individual and family. Let's weigh them both. The individual, 93 grams. And of course, the big boy, ready? <laughs> Never get sick of that. Family size fries, 220 grams. That's a lot of fries. Uh, mash and gravy, individual and large. Ours came not mixed. If anyone watching wants to figure out how much plastic is used here and what it weighs and then send it to us and we will update the video somehow. No, we won't, I don't know what I'm talking about. Our smaller mashed potato size with container, 151 grams. Let's make a mess. 500, 510, 515. 525, oh my god, 530, 540, 550, 568, 570. Oh, we'll go, I think we're going to 600. Uh, 601, 602, 603, wait. 603 grams, that was exciting, guys. Our regular gravy comes in at 
106 grams. And our large gravy comes in at 523 grams. Let's see if there's any differences between the original chicken sandwiches. So our original chicken sandwich is coming in at 170 grams. 261 grams for the US KFC chicken sandwich. Wait, theirs was 170? And ours is 261? Ooh, Australia, you guys are getting gouged. In Australia, KFC opts to give customers sealed drinks rather than from a fountain. These come in three different sizes, a 375 milliliter can, a 600 ml bottle, or a 1.25 liter bottle. The 1.25 liter bottle is more of a sharing option. I mean, unless you're really thirsty. Our fountain drinks come in two sizes, the 20 ounce, which is a regular, and the large, which is 30 ounces of soda. Not big enough, you say? I agree. You can also get this. Yeah, ba boom. A 64 fluid ounce bag, jug. I don't know where jug ends and bag begins, but this is straddling that very line. 64 ounces of your drink of choice. This is 51.4% bigger than Australia's largest drink. Suck it, Australia. We're getting our thirst quenched here in the US. Oh God, I swallowed something. I think there was a fly in here. <laughs> Still good. <laughs> this is all the food that you can get from an Australian KFC that you can't find in the US. It's a lot. Here is everything at a US KFC you can't get in Australia. Let's start with some chicken. Australian fried chicken comes in a few different ways, which can all come on their own or as a combo. We've got the original fillet piece, the zinger fillet piece, or the three hot and crispy boneless tenders. The zinger is very popular in Australia and it is very delicious and I love the crumbs on the outside. It's a little bit spicy, but not, not really that spicy at all. Uh-uh, uh, not good. It's really fatty. I'm gonna try the tenders instead. Please let this be better. Yeah, oh my God. Tender and a bit spicy, but not too much of a kick. It's like a subtle kick. This is so much better. Yum. In America, you can get your fried chicken in four different styles. Extra crispy, which is my favorite. The original, which you've been watching this whole video. And in some parts of this country, you can also get your chicken grilled or hot and spicy. But not here in Los Angeles. What is wimpy chicken? I'm telling you, this should be regular and this should be like diet. Unfortunately, KFC in America has discontinued the wings. That's very sad for that to happen. No more wings in KFC. Australia has a similar option, but they're called Wicked Wings which you can get as a three piece, a six piece, or a 10 piece. I think they're called Wicked Wings because they have this spicy marinade under the crumb, but I wanna make sure that they're not lying to us. So let's peel it back and see if there's a marinade behind it. Oh yeah, like a dark brown marinade. Oh my God, yum. The chicken's really tender and it almost like falls off the bone. I don't think it deserves the name of like Wicked, because it's wickedly spicy, but I, I think it's wickedly delicious. Australia has popcorn chicken. I know Joe was sad when this was discontinued from the US menu, but here in Australia, it's pretty iconic. It comes in three different sizes. It comes in a snack size, a regular size, and a maxi size. Yes, Brittany, I am mourning the loss of popcorn chicken here in the United States. I loved it, it's gone. They do have the nuggets though, which we've seen earlier. And the nuggets and the popcorn chicken, I mean, I haven't seen them side by side, but they look pretty similar. So maybe they just streamlined their chicken chunks. I don't know, no more popcorn chicken. Rest in peace. Rest in pieces. Popcorn chicken pieces. I demand that stays in the cut and me demanding it. <laughs> we have a large range of chicken sandwiches in Oz. We'll start with a couple that look pretty similar to the US options. There's the original recipe burger, 
So that's similar to the US chicken. And then we have the Zinger burger. This has had a bit of an upgrade since 2016 and it's now a lot hotter. This is similar to the US spicy chicken sandwich, but ours has a spicy coating in the chicken and it looks crispier than the original chicken. It's definitely crispier. Once again, I wouldn't say it's spicy, subtle kick, but nothing that's mind blowing. But this is probably one of our most popular burgers here in Australia. Everyone loves a good Zinger burger. We don't have nearly as many chicken sandwiches as they have in Australia, but we have a few and they are kind of similar. For instance, our chicken sandwich, crispy chicken sandwich, we got one, but instead of lettuce, ours has pickles. Can you see it's just swimming in mayonnaise? Anyone see that movie Saltburn? Never mind. And then also we have a spicy chicken sandwich, which of course has the spicy sauce. And I think pickles. And this little guy over here is the Chicken Little, which is just a chicken tender sandwich slider guy, also with pickles. Sandwich is KFC next level. Then we have some that are definitely exclusive, starting off with the double tender burger. Then we have a Zinger bacon and cheese burger, a Zinger stacker burger, a Zinger crunch burger, an original bacon and cheese burger, and last but not least, the barbecue bacon stack burger. I hear the US does not approve of bacon in the UK. So Joe, here's a close up of the bacon we have here. Joe's gonna roast us. I'm prepared. Joe, I swear bacon doesn't normally look like this. Ooh, yeah, I don't know about that bacon. Looks closer to UK bacon, which you know I do not like. I mean, it has a taste, but uh, on looks alone, I say, chuck it in the bin. I'm gonna try the Zinger Crunch Burger. So there's a stack of chicken, Zinger, and then coleslaw and some chips. It's good. It's an interesting combination. I like the crunch that it adds to it. I think that's actually really good, surprisingly. Yeah, I don't know. French fries and a chicken sandwich seems like a lazy add-on to make it a new exclusive sandwich. I mean, you could just put fries in any sandwich technically and make it a new sandwich. So yeah, thumbs down on that. I wouldn't want to try that. Get a good look, Brittany and the rest of Australia. This is the famous KFC Famous Bowl. Potatoes, gravy, corn, chicken nuggets now instead of popcorn chicken, and melted cheese because why not? Honestly, I think the cheese is, is, is kind of the most off-putting part about it. Like everything else, yeah, but the cheese, I don't know. I've never had one of these like outside of shooting the show. I'd probably just go for the nuggets with mash and gravy and corn. Like the, the combining it together is like, uh, I think I put a little effort into my life, right? So I would more just rather eat them separately than all smushed in this thing, but that's me. I mean, I guess this would be better if you were driving maybe. Like, yeah, I am late for work, which you're also having it for breakfast, which is strange. Also, Australia, if you're wondering, I mean, I barely cracked it. This is all mashed potatoes. This is just visually, I would go 87 to 90% mashed potatoes. So what essentially what you're doing is you're getting your own mashed potatoes and there's some corn and chicken and cheese on it. Buyer beware. I would be game to try it. It looks like it would be a pretty flavorful meal. I don't know if my stomach would be able to handle it, but I would be game to try it. I gotta say, I used to rag on the pot pie. The first episode, I really ragged on the KFC pot pie. And then producer Yuli came into my life and pointed out this thing's actually pretty good. And I actually tried it and they are actually correct. It is pretty good. Yeah, I like it, it's good. Hear that? It's a crispy boy. It's good. This is strange. The only drawback is I don't think people who are really in the mood for KFC are going there for the pot pie. I know you like a Yuli, but if you're like, want to go to KFC, it's like, let's get some chicken, let's get the chicken sandwiches. I want the mashed potatoes, the gravy, the corn, all that stuff. The pot pie, it just seems like something that, I don't know, are a lot of people getting it? It's been on the menu for a while. So it's savory, it's a savory pie, Australia. I know you guys like those, so. It's not bad. When I saw that, my mouth dropped to the floor. It looks unreal. I would definitely be giving that a go because 
Pies here aren't sweet. We love steak pies, chicken and like mushroom pies. So it's very savory. So when I saw your famous pot pie, I was like, I need to give this a go. So please introduce it here because that would be amazing. We're missing out. <laughs> and our last exclusive items are wraps, which are also called twisters. So we have a Zinger Crunch Twister and we have our original recipe twister. So this is the Zinger Twister. We have the chicken. We have some tortilla chips, some lettuce, what I presume to be coleslaw or maybe it's just shaved cabbage and then some sauce, Zinger sauce. So these also come in bowls as well. This is our original recipe bowl. You've got your chicken, you've got your tortilla chips and then the sauce on top and the veggies. And then the Zinger bowl, which is basically the same thing just with the Zinger chicken. So they're exactly the same as a twister, but without the wrap. I'm sorry, those twister bowls, absolutely not. No, no way, those look terrible. So you took apart a sandwich and just shoved it in a bowl. I understand that people wanna be healthier, so you took the, the, the stuff inside a twister wrap and put it in a bowl. This looks so depressing. Brittany, oh no. Oh, we got sides in the USA. Mac and cheese. Is mac and cheese a thing in Australia? I don't, I feel like macaroni and cheese is really American, right? Hmm. Actually, their mac and cheese kind of sucks. Sweet corn. Yeah, corny. And of course, biscuits. Australia, do you call them scones or you call them cookies? Crackers, what do you call them? This is a biscuit, not to be confused with the UK biscuit, and maybe what Australia calls biscuits. These are savory, buttery, fluffy, very crumbly, I don't wanna make a mess, pieces of bread that are good for meals like this because they're good for sopping up gravy, sopping up juices. Also, its dryness really counteracts the greasiness of the fried chicken. Definitely a must when you're having this type of southern fried chicken cuisine. In Australia, these are our exclusive size. We have a crunchy jalapeno slaw, a dinner roll, and we also do these sliders, which are these toasted flatbreads with like three types of fillings. We have the original pepper mayo slider, the original barbecue slider, and the original supercharged slider. So this is the barbecue slider. Whoa, that is packed with sauce. So basically it's a, really soft flatbread. And then inside it's just that chicken piece with barbecue sauce and a lot of it and a bit of lettuce. The one thing I'll say about their sides, I noticed that the sliders aside, <laughs> I do think it's funny to get a bunch of fried chicken and then be like, what do I want on the side? A small sandwich. So, all right, Australia, that's what you want to do, do it. I got sauces in front of me, so you know what that means, audience, say it with me. Sauce talk. Sauce talk. Here are all the sauces that are exclusive to Australia. We have a creamy aioli, a sweet and smoky barbecue, a supercharged, but they ran out of that one, a sweet chili, and a sweet and sour. Oops, ate it without trying, sorry. Mm. Creamy aioli is like just standard good aioli. It's nothing special. It's good for KFC, but I'm not like praising it. Then we have the sweet and smoky barbecue. Yeah, I can smell the smoky flavors through that. It's quite strong actually. That is really good. That would make a delicious marinade on like the barbie with some chicken. I would have liked to have tried the supercharged. I don't even know what it would taste like. It doesn't give any explanation in the name which is why it's so intriguing. I'm like, what does supercharged mean? And then we have the sweet chili. That's my favorite so far. It's a perfect amount of sweet and chili. This is the best with nuggets. I'm just gonna eat it again, because it's that good. Exclusive US KFC sauces, starting down here, the KFC sauce. I have a suspicion that this is just called something different in every country, but I feel like a ketchup and a mayo and like some pepper. It's good, I like it, but, you know. Ranch, 
Is ranch also not very popular in Australia? What's the ranch situation down in Australia? Love it here in America. We love our ranch in the USA. It tastes like every other ranch, because all ranch tastes the same. That's right, come at me. Also a buffalo ranch, very smart actually, very smart. Buffalo sauce, good for wings, not much else, but add a little ranch to it, cool it out. This might be my, this would maybe be my go-to. Honey barbecue, just sweeten it up. Just sweeten it up with a little bit of honey. And I'm here for it. Whoa, wait a second. Too much honey. Speaking of honey, honey mustard. Man, I'm just not a big honey mustard guy. Better than most honey mustards, but nah, that's like right. KFC sauce, yeah, it's like this weird, not so mystery, mystery sauce where you figure out what's in it. I mean, we had KFC in America. I don't know, try it, but it's just whatever. Ranch is whatever. Love the buffalo ranch though. But honey barbecue, mm, a little too honey, and the honey mustard. Better for honey mustards, but still just okay. On to desserts, we only have one. And this is the first time in Food Wars history we've gotten the mini one. It is the chocolate cake. I'll take the top off of it. This uh, got beat up in transit. <laughs> Sorry. So they usually have a bigger one, but I was surprised to find out they have mini ones now. Actually, <laughs> I think this is a smart idea. It's fantastic. That's a that's a really good. It has like that, like a little bit like a spice to it, you know, like an anise maybe. I don't know, but with the with the um, with the frosting, a plus on that cake. Thank you very much. I think the U.S. takes the lead with the dessert options. We only have one sad double chocolate mousse. Not for me. But there's a smiley face on the on the lid. But I'm not smiling. It's actually no, no, no. It's a really bitter mousse, bitter and no, not appealing. I say bring back the Crushes milkshakes. I heard that there was a petition going around to bring them back. So fingers crossed they will make a return because this is sad and depressing. And for exclusive drinks, we have a few fountain drinks you can get here in the US. Starting down here, I believe this is the lemonade. It is fantastic. Moving out, it's something called Starry, which kind of took over for Sierra Mist. Tastes exactly like 7-Up. Yeah, it's terrible. We got sweet tea. So wonderfully sweet, I love it. And of course, Mountain Dew Sweet Lightning. What is it? It is peach flavored Mountain Dew, I guess. Oh, I love that. And you can also get an Aquafina bottle of water. Here are our exclusive drinks. We have 7up, Solo, Sunkiss, a bottle of water, some sparkling water. We have an orange juice, and we were supposed to have a peach Lip Lipton iced tea here, but they didn't have any left. And then we have our raspberry freeze, a Pepsi freeze, and a Mountain Dew freeze, which I really wanna try these freezes because I haven't, and they look really, really good. I think we're gonna get a sugar high from this. That's really sweet, but it's actually really good. I feel like that would be your weekly intake of sugar if you were to consume one of these. That is, that is a lot. Pepsi is better than the raspberry if you just don't want it to be too sweet. No, lemony, just like a lemon, a frozen solo almost, Mountain Dew kind of tastes like solo. Pepsi is my favorite, very, very good. Picture yourself, hot summer's day, walking past the beach. Ooh, I'm thirsty, what would I like? This. A Pepsi freeze. Kentucky Fried Chicken, as it was known back then, came to Sydney, Australia in 1968. Then in 1991, it dropped its name to become KFC. Today, KFC is a subsidiary of Yum Brands Inc., a restaurant group, which owns about 2% of its restaurants and the remainder of the restaurants in the group are run by franchises. Together, Yum Brands and the franchises operate more than 25,000 KFC restaurants in over 145 countries. In 2018, KFC was the second largest fast food chain in Australia after McDonald's. 
and there are now 740 KFC restaurants in the country. The master franchise of KFC, Collins Food, has reported a 10% jump in revenue for the last year, taking it to over $1 billion. And the chain has stated it hopes to open more restaurants in 2024, so KFC is clearly trying to expand. There are 4,340 KFC locations in the US. That's 5.8 times or 487% more restaurants than in Australia. Chick-fil-A and Popeyes have quicker drive-throughs than KFC, which is why they might be doing better. And I will say, yes, Chick-fil-A's drive-through is efficient, man. You fly through that drive-through at Chick-fil-A. According to CNN Business, in 2021, KFC's average drive-through wait was six minutes and 30 seconds, which seems pretty long and its orders were only 88.6 accurate as of 2016. So the question is, do I wanna wait six minutes and my order's wrong? Yeah, that's not a good look, KFC. KFC even told customers just to order on the app and do quick pickup because it's faster than going through the drive-thru. KFC, I mean, you're even admitting to people like, yeah, we're taking from this drive-thru, just, just come in and get it. If I go and get KFC and it's quick, the food's hot and the order's correct, it's better than Chick-fil-A or, or Popeyes. So the only thing that's bad about KFC as I could see is that the, the food is takes forever, therefore it's kind of cold and the order's wrong. <laughs> so, you know, just solve those problems and look at Chick-fil-A. <laughs> KFC partnered with the drone delivery service Wing to pilot the delivery of KFC food in the Queensland area of Australia. That is pretty cool, actually. Can you just imagine one day you just ordered like your food flown to you? Like it just surpasses all traffic. You don't even get stuck in it. Like Uber Eats, like no problems that you've got Uber flying to you. The drones could only carry up to 1.5 kilograms. So this did limit the amount of food being ordered. As part of a rebranding in 2006, KFC wanted to make sure even aliens knew its chickens was finger licking good. So it created a Colonel Sanders face in the desert in Nevada, not far from Area 51. It was assembled with 65,000 tiles measuring 87,500 square feet, which is bigger than St. Paul's Cathedral in London. Shout out to Harry. It was deemed the face of space and stayed there for six months. Hey, KFC. I'm clearly not gonna tell you how to do your business, but maybe absorb some of the resources you put into that stunt into uh, the drive-through and getting the orders right. That's just my uh, business advice for KFC and the Colonel. Do what you want with that. In 2019, KFC Australia launched a wedding planning service. There were only six weddings available, but the full KFC service included a KFC celebrant to make it official. What did he look like? Did he look like Colonel Sanders? Like, did he have the whole attire? I want to see photos of this, this is amazing. A KFC food truck, a photo booth, KFC chicken buckets, and even a KFC themed cake. It didn't cover the cost of transport or venue, but it did feed enough for up to 200 guests. They should definitely be bringing this back. Why did they cancel this? I wonder what that cake looks like. Like, is it just a layer of chicken? Like, is it just chicken legs? Is it actually just like a chicken cake? Or is it a cake that looks like a chicken? In 2019, KFC put forward another campaign called the Michelin Impossible to make its most remote restaurant worthy of a Michelin star. That is really ambitious. Sam Elderman was the chosen franchisee for his restaurant in Australia's Northern Territory in Alice Springs. For anyone that's watching this, Alice Springs is really, really remote. Like Google where it is, no one lives there. It's 1,600 kilometers from the nearest town. Elderman even flew to Paris to plead his case and offered people on the street fried chicken. The campaign was more about the quality of the fried chicken than being from KFC. Unfortunately, he was unsuccessful, but the campaign went viral across Australia. Now, what country is getting the better deal? Let's find out. Here is a five-piece tender combo. It's got a side, five-piece tender, and a drink. This in the US is 
I want to point out if we got each of these items individually, it'd be $20.22. In Australia, you can get a similar combo with five pieces of tender chicken, regular chips, a regular drink, and an aioli sauce. In Sydney, this would cost you $15.95 AUD, which would be the equivalent to $10.14 USD. If you ordered this individually, it would cost you $18.65 AUD. That would be $11.86 USD. That makes our meal 48% cheaper. I mean, I know we lose one side, but like that is really cheap. In Australia, the most expensive item on the menu is the giant feast, which includes 15 pieces of chicken, 18 nuggets, three large chips, two sides, and a 1.25 liter drink. All of this will cost you $47.95 AUD or $30.50 USD. We're not sure how much this feeds, but a rough guess would be five people costing around $9.59 each. Our most expensive single menu item is the 16 piece meal. 16 piece bucket of chicken, four sides, and around eight biscuits all for $52.99. KFC suggests that this would feed seven to eight people and be roughly $6.62 per person. Yeah, right, me and two buddies could knock this out no problem. After a night of drinking, dude, we would kill this seven to eight, get real. But if you wanna do the seven to eight people, fine. This is 51% cheaper on average than it would be in Australia. In case you haven't noticed, KFC really puts an emphasis on like combos and meal deals so it appears that KFC is more expensive. When you break it down per person, it's actually cheaper. KFC's menus have become more expensive in the last year due to the cost of living increases. And I mean, that's no surprise, but some items are up by 25 cents, making them more expensive than McDonald's. But overall, KFC is still one of the best value fast food chains against its biggest rivals. You can still get more for your money. We wanted to see if there were any similarities in the nutrition of KFC in both countries. Here, the nutritional content for the original recipe burger in Australia is 382 calories, which is 19%. But I actually think that's pretty low for a sandwich. Like it's nothing too extreme. If you wanted to make it into a combo with regular fries and a can of Pepsi, that would give you a total of 674 calories which is almost double. Both countries do have a similar chicken sandwich, which is, of course, a crispy chicken filet, mayo, and either lettuce or pickles in a bun. The nutritional value for this chicken sandwich in the US is all of this. Wanna note that 650 calories is 70% more than the same sandwich in Australia. Also, it has more fat and more sodium, and both those categories is over 50% of your daily intake. This whole thing, 1,190 calories, which is 77% more than the same combo in Australia. Let's move on to the ingredients. After getting in contact with KFC Australia, they kindly sent us the ingredients of some of their menu items. Here are the ingredients for their original chicken. Here are the ingredients of our original chicken at KFC. We've noticed that our chicken actually uses two ingredients that the US doesn't use. Firstly, yeast extract is present, which is commonly used for flavorings in processed foods. It's not harmful, but it's usually high in salt, which is why the chicken tastes so good. Yeast extract can sometimes be known under other names like Marmite or here in Australia, Vegemite. Then we spotted seaweed extract in the ingredients, which seemed quite strange as it's not a fish product. It was also quite difficult to find a reason why they used it in fried chicken, but one source suggested it's used as a preservative to bind the foods together. Here are all the ingredients for the KFC chips in Australia. Whilst there are 16 ingredients, it's mainly flavorings, oils, and starches to keep the chicken together when frying. Here are all the ingredients in our KFC fries. We counted 34 ingredients. It looks pretty similar, so I don't know what we're doing over here. Do we really need them anymore to make them look roughly the same? <laughs> Let's see if ours are the different colors to yours. I mean, they taste incredible. They taste really incredible for our show. Australia sources its chicken from three local farms, Ingham's, Steggles, and Golden Farms. 
KFC says that at least 97% of the chicken meat is delivered throughout the week to keep it fresh and then prepared on site. Most of its produce is also locally sourced, such as the lettuce, the tomatoes, the canola oil used for frying, and the flour used to make the buns and tortilla wraps. The potatoes for the fries are from Tasmania and Victoria, and it's only when there's bad weather that the potatoes are imported. KFC Australia has debunked a lot of myths on its website surrounding their chicken. It does not use genetically modified chickens, nor are its chickens full of artificial hormones or steroids. To support this, KFC Australia are members to the Australian Chicken Meat Federation, which ensures a strict code of practice for the welfare of animals and domestic poultry. However, KFC Australia has not signed the Better Chicken Commitment, whereas other competitive brands are taking the lead KFC also doesn't have any plant-based options. It did trial one back in 2022, but no permanent items have been added to the menu as of yet. KFC UK and some other countries in Europe have already agreed to better welfare for the chickens, but not in Australia. Do better, Australia. Do better. All of the KFC chickens are raised on U.S. farms and use the USDA and FDA's standards, which actually prohibits the addition of hormones in poultry across the country. This means there are no added hormones or steroids in American KFC chicken. And from 2019, all chicken purchased from KFC US has not contained antibiotics. In 2022, KFC released its chicken welfare report to account for all of the progress it made. Fun fact, more than 32 million Zinger burgers are sold in Australia every year. That's almost like one Zinger burger per person in Australia. That is how much we respect and worship the Zinger. I wasn't lying. The Zingers are like a national treasure.